Okay, guys, good morning. We're going to do this recording to aid you with your SBA. Remember, when we were at class a moment ago, we were talking about discounts and we we're calculating discounts to demonstrate different levels of someone qualifying for a discount. In the first instance, we say calculate discount to be paid after uh, to be paid after discount for three levels of discounted amounts. Persons who purchase ten or more items receive a five percent discount. All right, persons who purchase five or more items will receive a three percent discount. All other purchases will receive a two percent discount on purchases of three or more items. Everyone else will earn no discount. So that's basically what we're doing. So there are three levels of discount depending on the amount of stuff you bought. So you bought ten hats more discount there. If you bought, let's say, five pairs of bags, different level of discount. You buy three to four pairs of shoes, different level of discount. All right? Not because of the shoes, but the amount, the quantity that you bought. So let's demonstrate this now in a spreadsheet function. Now we say, all right, equal if, open bracket, if the quantity here is greater than, greater than or equal to 10, what happens? Is going to be the subtotal here multiplied by the five percent because that is what the person earns. I mean, it's absolute because you have to be familiar with absolute cell addressing to get this done properly. Why? Because if we're to do this and they'll then pull downward, we don't want well, we get some false here, right? Because we did not tell the computer what to do if the discount worked if the amount didn't work out to 10 or more. All right, let's just put this back here, let's put D2. So we get some proper figures, all right? So what we're saying here is this. <clears throat> if the person bought 10 or more items, they want to get a 5% discount on the total sale price, on the price that they were buying the items for. And in this case, because the person bought nine, they pay the full 81,000, all right? Same thing for the person here buying pants, skirts. However, for the dresses, we see that the person got a discount again. So on these two items, the person got some sensible amounts, all right? But what we want to do here is not just to calculate an amount, all right? Maybe I should put zero here because we're saying the discount. So therefore, we don't want the person to see any discount if they didn't buy 10 or more, which that's representing more exactly what we want. So what we want to do now is to show the amount the person will pay after the discount is applied. So... Simple now, we add, simply add the element in that says D2 minus the actual calculation here, which gave us the $8,000 and change, $8,250. So D2 minus the discounted amount is $56,750. And that is the amount to be paid. Now let's modify this part now because we now have to say that, guess what? If you didn't buy 10 or more, what is going to happen? So if you didn't buy 10 or more, but you bought, let's say, 5 or more, you, get another, you can qualify for a discount. So we say if C2, C2 is greater than or equal to 5, comma, what happens? Same process, process like before. D2 minus D2 times the 3% figure here. 3% and make that absolute as well. It's good to put these in brackets. You don't have to in this case because it works out to be the same thing. But it, I do it so that we can make note of the order of operations because that's very important when you're doing these calculations. This one, fortunately, would work out to be the same. But we can't take that chance all the time. All right? Then we go to the next set of calculations now. What if you're purchasing just three or more? A noisy bike passing by. What if you're purchasing just three or more items? You get a 2% discount. So if C2, C2 is greater than or equal to three, comma, that's going to be now D2 multiplied by the 2% discount here. I made that absolute as well. All right? Now remember that this is just the discount portion that we did for this one. 
So we have to go again and put D2 minus the discount portion, which is this. That is what that is. So I'll put that in brackets. And then the last item is no. You didn't qualify for any discount, so you'll pay just a full amount. That's in D2. And then you close all the brackets that you opened, which I think is just one or two. One or two. Maybe it's just one of them. Which you know, if, if, and oh yeah, I should have if here as well. If open brackets. All right, so we close brackets over here and close that. So here we have a situation now where the persons bought the items and the discount based upon the level or the amount of items that they bought applied. Now, see this person bought only two and they're paying the full price. This person bought only one, they're paying the full price. This person bought three, so they would qualify for a 2% discount. This person bought nine, so they'd qualify for a 3% discount. And the person who bought the bags and the dresses and so on, they would qualify for a 5% discount. So this is basically a general idea of how a nested if function works. Nested because it's if within, an, and this if is within that one, depending on this other one as well. So it's three if statements all depending on each other. Nested if function. All right? Have a good day, guys. I hope that helps you somewhat with the task you're trying to accomplish. All right, have a good one. Bye-bye.